Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Transmart Foundation training program, the first class for 2017. Uh, today, we're going to have an introduction to the Transmart platform by Alina Fedorovich from Rancho Bioscience. Um, just a few notes uh, on logistics. We are using GoToMeeting, GoToWebinar, and uh, everyone is on mute. Uh, but uh, as we go through the presentation, you'll have an opportunity to ask questions. Uh, and um, we will try to answer those as we go uh, as best we can. And then there will be time at the end. Um, <clears throat> so uh, hopefully my sound is okay. I see there's some, some questions about that. Uh, to ask a question, uh, to get our attention, there are three ways. Uh, either in the dashboard, uh, you can raise your hand, uh, and I will try to monitor that throughout. I'll be connected. Uh, there, you can also type a question into the question panel, uh, and you can also send us a message using the uh, chat window. And uh, I will stay on the whole time and watch for these uh, as Elaine is doing the presentation, uh, and uh, we'll try to answer the questions as we go as best we can, but uh, we will also have time at the end for questions. Uh, the class will, the, the presentation will last approximately an hour, um, and this session is being recorded, and the slides are also, will be made available on the training site uh, as part of our website, and you can review those. Uh, hopefully these will be all available by the end of the day today. Okay, so um, we'd like to uh, start out just by, by mentioning that this is this training class is part of our 2007 program. Uh, we will have uh, other classes uh, once each month uh, as we go through the year. Um, and um, the classes are being uh, uh, created now uh, and we'll cover a number of things, including data loading, um, advanced use of the transport system, uh, Smart R, a new way of doing analysis workflows, uh, and also a couple of classes on actually programming in Transmart. So there'll be a number of interesting sessions, we believe, uh, coming up during the year. Uh, and these will all be announced uh, within the next couple of days. I'll watch the website. Um, I also have a couple of just quick questions uh, on a poll to ask you, uh, just so that we have an idea of sort of what your background is. Uh, so the first one is, have you used the Transmart platform before? And uh, you should be able to click on the uh, question box on your screen. You could take a sec, a minute to do that. Okay. And uh, the answer is that no one uh, who's taking the class today has seen the um, seen the system before. And then the second question is, uh, how uh, will you use the platform? Uh, are you doing it using it for your own research, either in uh, academia or in a company, uh, or are you supporting others, or are you from a vendor? So, then it looks like we have um, half and half about uh, from companies, uh, vendor. Well, okay. All right, equally split between the um, support, uh, academic research, and um, industrial research programs. So, all right, well, that's great. Well, thank you very much. So now I will turn the program over to uh, Elena, who will lead us through the, the uh, presentation. Uh, and uh, again, uh, if you have questions, please uh, use one of those three methods. Uh, Elena, over to you. Thank you, Rudy, for the introduction. Do you hear me well? Hello? Sorry, yes, sounds fine. Oh, OK. <laughs> Uh, do you see my slide? Um, you should have it now. Okay, do you see it? Yeah, a little bit loud. Maybe you can just turn the volume down just a little. Uh, let me know if if you can see it. Yes, slide looks good. Okay, can you then let's start. Turn your, yeah. turn your volume down just a little bit. A little bit loud. Uh, to, to make it bigger? No, your volume. Your voice. Oh, the voice. Uh, yeah, just a little bit. Yeah. Otherwise, it's okay. Yeah, there you go. Uh, okay, I'll try to talk louder. No, not to. Not, not loud. <laughs> okay. <laughs> 
Okay, let's start then. Welcome everyone. My name is Elena Fedorovich. I'm from Ranchi Biosciences, as Rudy has already said. Ranchi Biosciences is a silver member of Transmart Foundation. It offers Transmart services, and that's how we are involved here. Today we'll explore Transmart basics to make you familiar with what it is and why it's good to use it. Our objectives will be to give you a brief Transmart overview and uh, then explain user interface sections, including how to browse and search for studies already loaded into Transmart. Then we'll do a demonstration showing how to define cohorts to examine, depending on what you want to study or explore, how to view summary statistics for commonly tested calculations, and exploring data sets with some basic plots and statistical tests. We'll learn how to export data sets to analyze them outside Transmart, and how to use some advanced workflows and the genome browser. Transmart is an open source, community-driven data management system for translational medicine. This initial version of Transmart was developed in 2009 by Johnson & Johnson and Recombinant Data Corporation. In February 2012, the Transmart platform version 1 was released under GPL license by Johnson & Johnson. Uh, in uh, 2015, uh, the Transmart Foundation was established as a public-private partnership, uh, the result of collaborations between scientists in the United States and the European Union. And since then, Transmart Foundation supports the platform. Platform does not belong to Foundation, but Foundation facilitates platform's development and brings community together. You can find all the information on Transmart Foundation on that website, that uh, uh, the link to which you can see at the bottom of the slide. Transmart version 1.2 is a broad community effort, uh, and it was released in August 2014. These are the contributors to uh, uh, version 1.2, including pharmaceutical companies, university hospitals, organizations, and technology vendors. Version 1.2 incorporates functionality developed by Converge Health, The Hive, CTMM Trade IT, uh, Itrix, Pfizer, Sanofi, Takeda, and other community members. And this is the version that we are going to explore today. Transmart is a data warehouse with data analysis and data exploration functions accessed through a web interface that brings different types of data together such as patient sex, age, race, disease history, treatment information, clinical and behavioral assessments, laboratory tests, and molecular data such as uh, metabolome, proteome, mRNA expression, uh, and all kinds of high-dimensional data. Integrated in one platform, link clinical and omics data work in the platform together. This allows to use Transmart to store data as a data repository library, to view the data, to analyze it for target validation, biomarker discovery, toxicity, treatment effects, and so on. Uh, it also allows to use Transmart to reproduce and visualize the published findings and create hypotheses and test them. Transmart helps different collaborating groups or groups from different disciplines to communicate and share results to facilitate their research. It also allows to combine private data with public data. Uh, Transmart is written in Java Groovy and other languages using either Oracle or Postgres as a backend database. A community-based global effort has merged their contributions into a single code base with support for both Postgres, SQL, and Oracle. Transmart is not something that never changes. It is being constantly improved. All future enhancements to the Transmart uh, are based on version 1.2. Platform version 1.6 that contains new analytical capabilities released in summer 2016 will be introduced in the training classes this year and version 17 is currently under development this year as well. Platform functions uh, can be adjusted for the researcher's needs and new features can be added using our interface. 
uh, the computational organization of the platform is a web or client server. On the top of this slide, you see uh, that it has a web interface, which is available for users for data browsing and analysis. Uh, Transmart Data Mart in the middle. Um, is the backend database, as I said, Oracle or Postgres, that keeps all the loaded data uh, from where we mine it. Before loading, the data has to be curated. Low dimensional data or clinical data uh, has to be uh, properly formatted and standardized, applying ontologies, taxonomies, vocabularies, syntactical standards to be uniform. High dimensional data before loading onto Transmart has also to be formatted and clean and standardized as well. Then ETL engineers uh, load uh, the uh, uh, prepared data sets onto Transmart platform. Uh, the groups has to agree on the design of how the data would be organized in the Transmart for the best result. So to integrate data into platform, a good collaboration between scientists, clinicians, developers, service providers, and EDL engineers is crucial. Using uh, this link at the top of the slide, uh, uh, the link to Transpart Foundation, uh, in the tab Science, you can find use cases, public data sets curated for Transmart, information about training and various training and uh, tutorial materials, including video tutorials. Uh, Transmart Foundation website also has uh, links uh, to the uh, platforms, uh, to the public instances, uh, such as Postgres and public ETREX. Uh, that are available uh, for you to uh, do your own training and tests or practicing with Transmart. Uh, for better performance, you have to use Chrome and Mozilla browsers. Uh, all the information on the credentials is provided in this table as well. So after providing login credentials for the server, if you have to, you'll get into the landing page of Transmart platform, which is the browser tab. Uh, its main components are a text search field, a filtering field, uh, the program explorer field, and a tab selection bar. The primary purpose of the browse tab is to facilitate the selection of the appropriate study from the library of studies loaded on the server. The program explorer allows uh, the browsing uh, for the metadata of the studies. The elements of the top layer are referred as to programs. Uh, these are programs highlighted in green. Each program contains one or more studies. By clicking a program, you'd see studies and associated with the studies items. Uh, if we choose public studies here, for example, if I click it, uh, then we'll see what studies are in this public studies program list. So you see it's quite a number of studies here. And um, if you click on one of the uh, study notes on the, uh, in the field on the right-hand side, the metadata appears, uh, which includes um, uh, study description about study groups, organism, pathology, uh, analysis type right there, uh, publications if available, and um, the authors of the study as well. Now we're going to go through the active filters field. So the uh, active filters are used to refine the selected data to just the studies of interest. Uh, you can select a category to search within all or just select all to search all categories. You can type a search keyword in this box. Um, I put here asthma. And then you click uh, the filter to open the filter browser and select predefined. So uh, you see uh, that uh, the studies that uh, are connected to asthma are highlighted on the screen right away. Uh, the tab uh, selection bar 
that we'll explore during the demonstration in details, uh, consists of the analyze step, uh, which is used to view study data for subjects that you select based on criteria that you specify. There you compare data generated for subjects in two different cohorts based on criteria and points of comparison that you specify. So there you do all the analysis. Sample Explorer is used to search for data sets of tested tissue and blood samples within categories such as tissue type, pathology, and test type. Gene signature list is, is used to view definitions of existing gene signatures and add new signature lists. Uh, GWAS is a plugin to view genome-wide association study data. Uh, there you can view genetic variants in individuals to find those uh, that may be associated with a trait of interest, such as a major disease. And GWAS is available in the Transmark version 16.2, which is uh, being tested right now and is ready for the release. Admin tab um, is used to perform administrative tasks, such as creating Transmark user accounts. Uh, it's not for users, actually. And uh, utilities contain submenus providing supplementary information or action. And now we're going to move to the uh, actual demonstration, where I'm going to demonstrate basic features and functions of Transmart for you. We'll do hypothesis generation and test uh, it using Transmart advanced workflows. We'll focus on two specific data sets from GeoReports. Uh, to illustrate uh, how uh, some, some but not all Transmart workflows. And finally, we'll uh, do genome browser demonstration using additional data set. Uh, the data deposited into GEO has been described in these two publications, one in PLOS One and the other published in Cancer Research. Both publications are about will melanoma discovering genes related to metastatic progression. Uh, GSC 27831 uh, is um, uh, from the publication by uh, Dan Gemi, and GSC 22138 study set is uh, from um, Laureate's uh, publication in Cancer Research. Dan Gemi says that Syntonin is associated with metastatic disease progression in uveal melanoma, while Loret found that high PTP4 A3 phosphatase expression correlates with metastatic risk in uveal melanoma patients. We're going to focus on the second paper and um, use Dan Gemi's results to check if in this independent uh, cohort of uveal melanoma patients the PTP4A3 phosphatase expression is also uh, correlates with metastatic risk uh, in these um, cancer patients. So our goal will be to learn how to reproduce the published findings quickly using Transmart and find other interesting associations between genes uh, and metastatic melanoma progression in these studies. Now I'm going to uh, switch to our platform, uh, which, um, sorry, it will take me a moment. Uh, maybe you have some questions about the uh, Transmart basics while I'm opening my instance. I, I don't see any questions yet, but if anybody has one, we can certainly entertain it. Uh, no, I don't see any, so keep going. Okay. So this will be our private um, training instance. Okay. I use my credentials here to log in. And uh, I will go to analyze right away. And we'll end uh, at the comparison tab of the analyze uh, tab. So in comparison, we choose subsets for our future analysis. Now we'll go through the uh, um, 
Uveal melanoma Lorex uh, study, um, study 3. So this is a conventional study 3 for Transmart that consists of the uh, nodes, the folders, how we call them in Transmart, uh, biomarker data, clinical data, and subjects. Uh, other nodes can also be uh, added to the uh, study tree as desired. Uh, the subjects uh, usually consist of demographics and medical history. And demographics uh, usually has uh, information on uh, patient's gender, age, um, ethnicity, race, if available. And medical history contains information on the disease, treatment, uh, cancer type, and so on. Um, for convenience here in Transmart, uh, the uh, uh, blue labels indicate uh, numeric data in the folder, and green labels, as ABC here, indicate uh, the categorical data. The uh, um, high dimensional data is indicated by a helix always. So in this study, we have the uh, um, gene expression data. Uh, also, in parentheses, uh, with uh, at each um, study folder name, uh, this is a, um, a quantity of the patients involved in, in, in this assessment. Um, so. You can choose here, sub, for subset one, you can choose uh, just the whole study note, or you can choose uh, two different categories, as subset one and subset two. To start with, we'll use the whole uh, study, as subset one, and explore summary statistics. So summary statistics gives us the basic statistics of whatever we choose to put there. Because I chose the whole study note, we see the summary statistics for the whole uh, set of patients in this study. It is uh, visualized uh, by histograms of age and sex and plot uh, for the age comparison. It also gives uh, the basic statistics uh, table where you have mean values, um, median values, standard deviation, and number of patients uh, for which uh, statistics was calculated. It also gives um, the percent distribution of the gender here. And uh, it shows how many uh, patients were involved in each um, uh, part of the study. In uh, biomarker data, you have data for 63 patients, as well as in clinical and uh, the uh, whole study um, has 63 patients. Uh, you can always uh, add categories into the summary statistics, and this would be quite useful when you choose um, two different cohorts, and then you can compare uh, their uh, statistical uh, data in some in basic statistics, and uh, then you will see also the um, significance of the difference, if any. If we go to grid view, here we see the list of uh, the data. So grid view allows us to visualize the data, uh, to put any data that we want here as well. Uh, so. By drag and drop, we can add any data into the list. For example, tumor diameter and tumor thickness and anything that you like. And also, you can remove uh, the data that you don't want to see here in this list by clicking any column. Uh, you uncheck uh, the tabs that uh, that you don't want to see here. For example, samples are empty. I remove them. Race, we don't have it. Um, we can also remove subset because we know this is the whole study. And leave others here in the list. So not only this list allows you to look 
at the data for each individual patient. But also, you can export this list onto your computer by clicking the export to Excel at the bottom here. And uh, if, if you click on that, uh, the file will be downloaded onto your computer, and you can always work with this data outside Transmart. The other way to um, export data on your computer is to use data export function. So here you have uh, two data files for this study, uh, clinical and low-dimensional data, and um, high-dimensional data folder. And you can always export uh, either two of them by checking or any of this one. So by clicking Export Data, the export is started and um, already finished. That was fast. But if it's um, a big data set, it can uh, have some time. So you can run it at the, uh, on the background. OK, so now we go back to comparison page. And now we're going to proceed uh, with our um, advanced workflow analysis. So um, we'll start with, um, we'll focus on the published data uh, to see if we can reproduce it. So uh, just to remind, Lorette's uh, paper says that PTP4 A3 phosphatase high levels of expression correlates with metastatic risk in real melanoma patients. Let's find if this gene is in the top list of overexpressed genes for the patients in this study. And for that, uh, we're going to choose uh, patients with metastasis and without metastasis as a subset one and subset two. So I drag in no metastasis as a subset one and metastasis, patients with metastasis as a subset two. Then I go to advanced workflow. Hmm. And here you see the list of the available in Transmart instance 1.2, um, advanced workflow analysis. We we'll choose marker selection here. And uh, we have to put in the box high dimensional data. So I drag in expression data. And what we need to do is just hit run. So while the heat map is uh, going to be produced, it will take a few minutes. Uh, we're going to um, do another analysis in a parallel instance, which will be a correlation analysis. And for that correlation analysis, I will choose the whole study, the subset one, hit correlation analysis. Uh, correlation analysis works with um, numerical concepts. So uh, in this study, we can use uh, tumor diameter and tumor thickness as a uh, numerical concept to compare. So we want to see if there is a correlation be be uh, between these two uh, tumor size parameters. So we put them here and hit run. And um, so the results appear here. And we see that uh, there is actually no correlation uh, between tumor diameter and tumor thickness in the patients with uveal melanoma. I have to mention here that when you run any advanced workflow analysis um, and get results, you can always save them on your computer for publication or for, anal for analysis, because once you uh, close the instance, uh, the results are not saved. So you have to click download our data and the pictures and the tables uh, will, will, will be downloaded onto your computer. Now let's go back to our um, marker selection and it's still running. 
And now uh, we can see, we'll see a heat map produced right here. So the heat map has subset 1 and subset 2 separated here. On the run head side, you have the probe IDs and associated with them gene symbols. At the bottom, you have the patient's IDs. Uh, the heat map consists of the squares of red and green and black colors. And these squares actually are Z factors calculated as log 2 of expression value minus log 2 of median value. And this difference is divided by standard deviation. In Transmart, this score interval is kept from minus 2.5 to 2.5. Uh, the red color uh, means that uh, the gene expressed uh, has high intensity or uh, has high level of expression, and green uh, color indicates uh, the lower gene expression uh, level. At the boot, and, and from this heat map, we can see that patients with uh, metastasis has, uh, have quite a different uh, gene expression profile than the patients with, without metastasis. And definitely, a lot of uh, genes are um, overexpressed in patients with metastasis compared to no metastasis. At the bottom of this result, we see the table of top markers. And the third top marker gene here is our PTP4 A3 phosphatase. That was actually expected. So now, using this. Uh, marker, uh, top marker list, we can create a gene signature list for our future analysis. Uh, for that, you have to choose the uh, list, uh, the, the genes that you want to analyze. Uh, for example, five first genes. Type in into the Excel file in one column, and then save it in text format. Once your file is ready, you go to Gene Signature List tab. And here you can download your Gene Signature List. So I have, I have here the Gene Signature List that I prepared for this presentation. Uh, if I click on it, you'll see uh, that Gene Signature List that I created. So I put here five genes, and ptp 4 a 3 phosphatase is within this, uh, within this list. So to create and uh, to download the new signature list, you have to click New Signature. Then you type in uh, the name of the uh, this uh, signature list. For example, I put my initials and um, something else. So any name you want. Then you click Metadata. And you can fill the information in these boxes, um, but they are optional except those that are highlighted with the red star. So we have to fill this information. Uh, for species, we put the uh, um, Homo sapiens here. And uh, technology platform must be filled. So we know that it is GPL 570, which is here. Uh, then we hit next, and um, we have to select uh, p-value cutoff, that's U.05. We have to uh, fill the file information. Uh, so basically, we use gene symbol, so we, we choose that one. But also, you can do the probe set if you want to. And also, we have to select metric indicator, which in our case will be not used because we're using gene list. Usually, uh, it is for um, probe list that you choose different ones. So once you filled all this information, you choose your file and then save. So then you'll have your gene signature list uh, 
load it onto Transmart, and then you can proceed to the analysis that we're going to do in a moment. Uh, but I wanted to ask if you have any questions uh, at this point. Again, if you have questions, if you raise your hand, I'll unmute you, or if you want to type it, I can um, we'll get you an answer. I don't see anything yet. No questions. Okay. Uh, then we're going to do uh, to build a heat map using our gene signature list that we just created to see. Um, if this uh, to see the level of expression of these um, uh, signature genes that that we just um, identified. So again, uh, for subset one, I chose um, patients with no metastasis and patients with metastasis for subset two. Go to advanced workflow. Choose heat map. And um, don't forget to put the uh, high dimensional data. Then uh, I have to click high dimensional data tab and start typing the name of my gene signature list file. It will uh, pick it up, and I just have to click on it. And then we use aggregate probes, uh, which will allow the algorithm to be applied, and uh, our heat map uh, will represent only probes with the, uh, that will be used in the calculation. So our PTP4 A3 phosphatase will not have two probes, but will be combined into one probe. So we click Apply Selection, and it runs. So, um, right, uh, the heat map is produced, and uh, comparing uh, subset one and subset two, we see that um, all these uh, five uh, selected as markers gene are uh, definitely overexpressed in patients with metastasis compared to patients without metastasis. That uh, is a good result, and um, it proves um, uh, and uh, visualizes the data published um, by the authors of the study. So now we're going to switch to uh, box plot with ANOVA analysis. Uh, again, uh, we'll use the same uh, two cohorts, so I'm not going back to comparison. Just choose. Um, uh, box plot with ANOVA analysis. And here uh, we're going to actually see the, uh, the difference of the group mean values for the PTP4 A3 phosphatase. For the independent uh, variable, um, Actually, for this analysis, it's better to use the whole data set. So it's quite useful to mention here also that uh, when you change the analysis, uh, here there is a tab to clear, and you can clear all the results right away. So I put the whole uh, study into subset one, and then um, click on the box plot with ANOVA again. And um, so I'll put for independent variable no and yes metastasis, two categories. And for dependent variable, the high dimensional data will be used. Then I click high dimensional data and choose PTP4 A3 phosphatase, apply selection. And hit run. Here we'll look at the statistic results to evaluate if the differences between groups are significant as well. 
not only they are reproduced as a plot. So looking at the plot, we can see that um, uh, in the patients with uh, metastasis, uh, PTP4 uh, phosphatase is overexpressed. And statistics tells us that the difference is significant for each probe. Again, you can save these uh, tables and the plot on your computer to look at it later. Now, let's uh, check our hypothesis using another real melanoma study by Gangemi. Uh, we want to apply gene signature list that we just created uh, for this study and see if the independent group of uveal melanoma patients has the same genes that are overexpressed uh, as well in patients with uh, and without metastasis. So uh, I clear the results here. And uh, put the no metastasis subset at 1 and yes metastasis subset 2. Go to advanced workflow and run hit, hit map for uh, this study. So it has also, fortunately, uh, run, run, run on the same platform um, high dimensional data. We click run. Uh, usually takes time for heat maps uh, to be built. Probably I didn't uh, apply the gene signature list, sorry. Let's start it over. Yeah. So, gene signature list. Um, aggregate probes, apply selection, and run. Uh, the more genes you use in the list, the longer the uh, um, heat map will be produced. So you see, because we had only five probes here, it ran pretty quickly, but if we have 50 of them, it will take longer. So from this uh, heat map that is produced, uh, we can see that in the patients with metastasis, although it's a smaller group, but the uh, profile of the gene expression has similar pattern in the patients with metastasis uh, compared to patients without metastasis uh, as in the uh, previous publication. Of course, if the group will be bigger, then probably the results will be much more um, profound. But still, uh, we, we support hypothesis by uh, running those kind of analysis. And now let's uh, go to other advanced workflow analysis and um, explore them. So the other one will be, uh, uh, that I want to show you, will be logistic regression. Um, and now I will focus mostly on Laureate's uh, study because it has a bigger group of patients, which gives us better statistical results. So uh, again, using two cohorts, going to logistic regression. And um, uh, for Independent variable, we have to use uh, the high dimensional data. And um, uh, for, for the outcome, we'll use uh, yes, no metastasis. So also, 
Um, yeah, let's see how it works. Mm. Okay, so here we have to choose actually the whole data set. Somehow it doesn't work. Okay. Um, yeah, it doesn't look like it works. Okay, let's try the scatter plot with linear regression then. Sometimes it happens. Um, probably the R server had to be uh, reloaded, but was checked this morning. Anyways. So we drag all data set into subset one. We choose the scatter plot with linear regression. Uh, for independent uh, variable, we have to use uh, continuous variable. So we'll use uh, the uh, uh, numeric data, which is uh, metastasis pre survival here. And for the dependent variable, we use high dimensional data. And we choose uh, PTP4 phosphatase. It run. Um, and um, we see the scatter plot here. Um, and if we look at the information on statistics, we see that R squared is uh, pretty poor, which means that free survival does not correlate with the, uh, this particular gene expression. So this is the result of our analysis. And um, the next one that I want to show you is the survival analysis. So we'll go to comparison tab, clear results. Um, we drag all uh, folder again. Choose survival analysis. Uh, and again, we use the metastasis free survival as a time time variable. Uh, for category, we'll use um, genetic characteristics here. We have um, uh, chromosome 3 status uh, as disomy, monosomy, and partial monosomy. So we put all three categories here. Censoring variable is optional, so we're not going to use it. And click run. Survival analysis shows uh, what is the survival status of the chosen cohorts. And we see here on the plot, which is a, a kaplan mayer estimator plot, uh, we see that for monosomy, the metastasis-free survival prognosis has poor outcome compared to the patients with uh, disomy and partial monosomy. Analysis also allows to calculate Hoch coefficient, uh, hazard three ratio, and other uh, 
um, statistical parameters for this test. Uh, the uh, other uh, workflow that I wanted to show you is a waterfall. Uh, the waterfall organizes data by value of continuous variable. Uh, here we're going to select the continuous variable which will be a tumor diameter. And uh, we have to choose the range of the tumor diameter uh, by which we uh, separate the data into groups. So um, for low, we put 12, and for high, we'll put 17 millimeters of the diameter, and then uh, hit run. And we see the plot produced. So here we visualize the numeric data distribution. Uh, red is um, uh, the, uh, the low data values highlighted, uh, high uh, value data is highlighted by blue, and uh, black is uh, the data values between uh, low and high that we defined. So uh, the plot shows that the tumor size is, is distributed through the cohort of patients. Uh, with patient's ID at the bottom of the plot. And again, you can uh, load these results on your computer. Now we we'll explore the Fisher test, which deals with categorical data. And um, for Fisher test, I use the whole data set again, so I guess we don't do anything here. It's a non-parametric analysis that um, compares uh, the uh, statistical difference between the groups of categorical data. For the independent variable, we'll use uh, chromosome 3 status as well. And for dependent, we'll use yes and no metastasis. We hit run. And we see the data tables where we can um, see that uh, there are 14 patients with, with, with this DSME uh, without metastasis and four with metastasis and so on. And uh, Fisher test p-values, uh, squared p-value and high square results. So uh, this uh, test indicates an effect of tumor genetic status on metastasis outcome. So um, now we're going to uh, switch from the advanced workflow to genome browser analysis right here. So I go for, to comparison and clear what we did before. Um, for genome browser, we're going to use our test set right here that has the uh, high dimensional data which uh, we will be able to apply to genome browser and browse. So it's based on VCF file and basically it's a SNP assay data here. Yeah. We have subjects uh, with um, that divided by healthy and diseased subjects. And uh, for this analysis, we'll choose two subsets. One will be a diseased and subset two healthy. Then we go to genome browser. And uh, it's, uh, it's useful to before uh, loading the data, uh, reset the browser. Then it will work properly. After that, we have to drag the VCF file here. 
you just drag and drop in the uh, genome browser field. And you see the categories uh, that uh, appeared right away on the uh, right-hand side here. Uh, for, uh, the categories uh, available in this data set and um, that appears by default on the uh, genome browser uh, screen uh, for subset 1 and for subset 2, the quality of depth. Uh, summary of minor allele frequency, minor allele frequency, uh, and variants. Uh, for those of you who are not familiar with uh, SNP uh, analysis, um, I, I wanted to show you how the uh, VCF file looks like that you will appreciate what you can do in Genome Browser. So the VCF file contains the information on the allele frequencies and SNPs in this info tab right here. And as you can see, all the categories that we just saw on the screen of Genome Browser are here in one line separated by, uh, separated, and it's very hard to analyze this. So, here in these columns is the information for each patient. So what Genome Browser allows us is to visualize uh, these categories separately on the screen. Uh, there are several options to navigate through the Genome Browser. We can identify the region of the uh, genome that we're particularly interested in, or we can type the name of gene here in that box. Uh, let's choose PARC7, for example, which is a um, uh, significant gene for Parkinson's disease. And uh, we have to hit Enter. So once we, we did that, we see the uh, labels appeared on the screen. Uh, that are connected to each of this category. So these uh, are the mutations that uh, are present in, in this uh, gene um, part of the genome uh, for subset 1 and for subset 2. And you can see um, these patients um, uh, disease patients has uh, two less of the labels here. Uh, clicking on each label, you can see the information about it. So the information here uh, is on the region of that SNP, uh, the SNP name, the reference, the alteration, minor allele frequency, allele frequency, allele count, and, and so on. Clicking on uh, the same uh, genomic variant type, uh, you, can, you can see uh, it for another group of patients. So it's the group uh, test result. Uh, if you want to, you can also uh, put, uh, add the information on, SNP, uh, on SNPs here as well. So you click on that cross, choose SNPs, and in a minute we'll have the information on SNPs. So here you, you, you see it. Clicking on any of these you'll see the information associated with uh, this particular SNP. So there are boxes here uh, which, which may have different information too. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can browse through SNPs as well. Also, although these categories are by default, uh, that doesn't mean that they're all 
uh, here from the info field from the VCF file, you can add some of them uh, as well. So clicking on cross, you can do add VCF info and uh, you can choose something that you like to add. Let's do FQ. Hit OK. And um, this uh, additional category should appear on the genome browser screen. Let's see. So maybe too much information here, but it definitely should appear here. Uh, so it didn't appear, probably it's not present for this particular gene region. Uh, also, uh, you see this summary of minor allele frequency and minor allele frequency, which are bars here. You can always um, make the, uh, them bigger. By clicking that. For some reason, it doesn't work. Okay, so our instance is a little bit misbehaving today, but um, basically this is all uh, that I wanted to show you today. And um, if you have any questions, I will be happy to answer them. Okay, thank you, Elena. Um, anyone have a question, just raise your hand. I will unmute you and you can just ask it. Or if you want to type it. Okay, you know, still don't have any question. Okay, well, I guess there are no questions. So um, thank you again, Elena. Thank you for your offer. Um, Staying on the line and listening to this, um, the recording will be posted uh, later today. Uh, and um, please check out our other classes during the rest of the year. Thank you very much. Thank you.